Okay, we're back, and we're looking at some E&M. Uh, this is uh, a type of induction problem where you have a moving conductor in a magnetic field, but this is different than what we're more used to seeing. We're used to seeing, uh, you know, like a conducting rod, a little stick or something, moving right through a magnetic field, okay, a, a linear type of motion. Here's a little twist on that type of problem where you have a rotating conducting rod swinging through a magnetic field. Um, now the thing is, uh, because it's a conductor, it has free electrons, and therefore if it moves in any way, QV cross B kicks in, and it's going to polarize the rod. So the fact that it's going to polarize um, also tells you that you're going to have a voltage difference across it. So a moving rod in a magnetic field is acting kind of like a battery. It wants to, it has voltage, it wants to drive a current if it possibly can. So here, here's the picture. Um, but let's say one end of your, your rod is fixed. It's like hammered down or something and it can rotate. So maybe we're looking overhead, it's on a flat tabletop. And this rod is free to, to circle around um, going counterclockwise. <coughs> Okay, so it has an angular velocity to it. Now, what, what's kind of weird about this is if you call for a mechanics and, and rotational motion, the linear speed is um, a, a radius times omega, which is your angular velocity in radians per second. <coughs> now, different parts of the stick are, have different V values. Okay, it depends on that radius. So let's imagine that we have a little bit of, of length right here. Maybe we'll call that dr. And it's a certain distance from your axis of rotation. We'll call that r. Now the, the velocity of that particular piece then is going to be a little r times omega. And we'll just write that over here. Now, if you recall from class, or if, if you watched the other video on, on moving a rod through a magnetic field in a linear motion, um, we, we know that anything moving through a magnetic field, the, the induced EMF that you end up with is magnetic field times the length of your rod times how fast it's moving. Well, we can't just multiply here because you have different Vs. So in other words, for, for that little chunk right there, um, where its its speed at that moment is little r omega. Um, it's producing a little bit of voltage over that little bit of length of the, the rod. So that, that little bit of EMF, I guess we could write it as the magnetic field times length. Well, the length of that little chunk is just dr. And it's moving with a certain velocity r omega. Well, if you want the, the total voltage difference across this rod, we have to add up all these little chunks from the axis all the way up to the, the end of it. Okay, and we'll say that the total length of the stick is L. So that means we, we need to integrate. We have to add up all these little oops, all these little EMFs to get the total. Okay, now since our, our variable is the length, we're, we're going from the axis rotation out to the, the end of the stick, which is just the total length. And by looking at this, we can easily do this integral. Um, ours are variables, so we're going to have a one-half magnetic field times angular velocity, which we're assuming is a constant, and uh, we'll pick up a, an r squared. And so when you evaluate this, the total voltage being induced has a magnitude of a half the omega L squared. Okay, so that, that's the voltage that you get by in, inducing a dipole, by polarizing this thing with the magnetic force. This only works when you have conductors and those free electrons that can feel the force in the first place. Um, 
but you get some funky looking you know induced voltage from all this uh, so yeah it's definitely a, a different sort of picture okay kind of weird and yet um, we've, we've got all the pieces here where we can figure it out so I hope this helps and until next time we'll see you later